Hello, I'm Dr. Gil Wilshire at Missouri Fertility. Welcome to the first of our video series on nutrition. Now I was thinking about what are we going to talk about in these nutrition videos and it occurred to me most everything you've been told about nutrition is wrong. So in this first video we're going to kill some sacred cows and get rid of a lot of misperceptions. Nutrition is inherently difficult to study. Uh, we like to change one variable in science. In nutrition, there's millions of variables, and it's very hard to get clean, scientific, conclusive data. Another reason nutrition is difficult to study is that we're all different. We're young, we're old, we're black, we're white, we're from different areas of the world, we're in different area, times of our lives, we have different illnesses, different health conditions. One size does not fit all. So uh, every time you hear about a blanket statement, it has to be wrong. Human beings are also inherently resilient. We can eat almost anything. And uh, throughout history, we've been uh, having to adapt to different conditions. Uh, if you read your history, um, there have been prisoners fed bread and water for a long, long time, and they survive. Um, now, I don't advocate a bread and water diet, but if you're in a jail cell and you have bread and water, you add a couple mice, a couple cockroaches, a, a resilient uh, a human being can live an awfully long time. Uh, this brings up another concept. What's the difference between just subsistence eating to enough to get by, to enough to be healthy, to enough to be super healthy? How do you make these determinations? How do you study them? Inherently very difficult and almost impossible to prove. Another difficult thing about the field of nutrition is nothing is inherently good or bad necessarily. Let's take the example of water. Too little water, you die. Too much water, you die. Everything in between, what's the difference? It's very hard to determine what is the optimum amount of water. So I will start this uh, uh, talk with the, uh, uh, the concept of uh, water and hydration. Well, obviously you need enough water so you don't uh, die. But beyond that, what do you need? Well, it turns out there's very little data. Um, you see people hogging, uh, you know, lugging around jugs of fluids in the gym and whatnot. Uh, I know of no data to suggest that that's helpful. Uh, if you have a normal brain and normal sensation of thirst, you should probably drink when you're thirsty and stop when you're not thirsty. And apart from very specific uh, athletic events or endeavors or weight cutting or anything other than this, uh, adjusting your fluid intake beyond uh, when you're thirsty or not thirsty probably has no scientific data, or no scientific basis. Let's move on to salt. A lot has been made of salt. Well, salt is an essential nutrient. And if you're not one of the two or three percent that has high blood pressure that's salt sensitive, probably doesn't matter exactly how much salt you eat. You should probably salt your food to taste, and that should be fine. So you shouldn't worry about salt at all. Another nutrient, fiber. Fiber gets all this attention that it's so, so good for you. But it turns out there's virtually no good science to support taking fiber. Remember, a baby, when it's nursing for the first one or two years of its life, consumes no fiber and seems to do quite well. Uh, a study just came out, and this is early 2019, looking at thousands of people, uh, putting together uh, inf information from many, many studies, and it showed maybe a 30% benefit in some health conditions with a fiber intake of maybe 20 to 30 grams. But you have to understand with these types of studies, a 30% difference, although it sounds large, is virtually meaningless. With these meta-analyses and epidemiological studies, unless you see a three to four fold increase or decrease in something, then 30% is virtually meaningless. So I'm sorry to say there is virtually no good data on fiber. Now, the amount of fiber you get from some vegetables and a salad in the day is probably adequate for most people. Now, there may be some situations where more is better, but as far as good scientific data, fiber falls short. Fat. Fat is an essential nutrient. You will die if you don't get fat. Saturated fat does not clog your arteries. Olive oil is probably neutral. Um, Polyhydrogenate, polyhydrogenated or supersaturated uh, fats, uh, uh, they're called um, hydrogenated oils. This occurs with uh, synthetic processes, 
Uh, these are probably not good for you. Heat damaged fats, you can smell these in some fast food restaurants, are probably not good for you. But beyond this, uh, fat is not a, a bad nutrient and you should not uh, shun fat by any means. Protein. Protein is essential for life. If you don't get adequate protein, you will die. Um, how much protein you need probably depends on uh, your levels of activity and other conditions, but there's no doubt that you need protein. There's also no doubt that the best quality protein you get is from animal sources. Animals, fish, birds, whole eggs, these are your best sources of protein. In fact, there's never been a society on earth that has not lived with uh, some, ta uh, some intakes of animal protein. Uh, one of my little hobbies is uh, hunting for arrowheads or points. This is a beautiful point from uh, Illinois. And uh, it is a piece of art, it is a work of art, but this is a piece of technology that was essential for the uh, survival of the Native Americans. Uh, a beautiful piece. And it's just a reminder that animal protein has always been part uh, of a healthy diet. Uh, just like uh, Fat, cholesterol has had a bad name over the years. This is probably neutral. No one should worry about how much cholesterol they eat. Uh, and it's really a non-starter how much you should have or not. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Vitamins. Uh, vitamins were discovered through experiments of nature. And one of the most famous ones was vitamin C. Uh, the English sailors were found to be cured from scurvy by eating limes. Eventually it was found that it was vitamin C. It was a very easy experiment to do. Uh, when it comes to how much of a vitamin you need, uh, the data is, is not clear at all. Uh, beyond uh, recommended daily allowances, it's hard to make an argument for more or less of a vitamin for most people in most circumstances. Some interesting data is coming out right now on vitamin C. Perhaps when someone is in shock or septic, they may temporarily, in fact, have levels of vitamin C consistent with scurvy. Uh, in that situation, maybe one or two grams of uh, vitamin C intravenously might have a role. Uh, but beyond that, uh, uh, super doses of vitamin C orally uh, may not make much difference. Uh, folic acid, there may be some controversy, particularly with people that have trouble uh, metabolizing or activating their folate. Um, uh, but once again, this is controversial. Uh, vitamin D, probably best derived from the sunlight. Uh, but... Uh, uh, beyond that, uh, how much is optimal uh, still is controversial. The next thing I'd like to talk about today is calories. Much is made of calories. Uh, but in fact, calories are basically a myth. Um, if you're looking at mixed meals, then if you look at the calorie content, it tells you pretty much how much food are you consuming. If you're consuming about 400 calories a day of a mixed meal, you're probably not eating enough and you'll starve. If you're eating 40,000 calories of food in a day, you're obviously eating too much and bad things will happen as well as weight gain. However, when we're talking about normal amounts of food, calories are virtually meaningless. Uh, there are no calorie receptors in our bodies. Um, what determines our body composition and what we do with food is our enzymes, uh, our, our actual micro machines, nano machines in our uh, mitochondria, their electron uh, pathways, there are proton gradients, uh, there are channels. Metabolism is what determines uh, what happens to our bodies and what happens with our food. Um, obviously, we have different metabolisms when we're old or when we're young. I am older. If I eat too much, particularly carbohydrates, I put that uh, food into belly fat. If you're young, like my boy, who's 14 years old in his growth spurt, the more he eats, the bigger and stronger he gets. The same food, same calories, very different effect on the body. So uh, you've heard it here, calories are absolutely a myth. Uh, the thought that you would eat food, it magically turns into energy and magically turns into uh, uh, body components or fat uh, is simply a figment of the imagination. Another thing I'd like to talk about today is the Mediterranean diet. Now, I like the Mediterranean diet. If you regard it as a, a diet that has real meats, real fruits, real vegetables, whole foods, very little processing, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and, and I think it's generally a good thing. But when you hear, sci hear science say, 
the Mediterranean diet is good or the Mediterranean diet has been studied, uh, run away. Uh, there is no such thing as the Mediterranean diet. There's at least 20 countries around the Mediterranean. They all eat differently. So this is just another example about uh, something that sounds scientific until you pull it apart. There's really no science there at all. If you have a diet with thousands of components, how can you study that uh, scientifically? So, we've debunked the idea of calories. We've debunked the idea of a particular ethnic diet. We've debunked the idea that you need extra water, that you should avoid salt, that you should avoid fat or cholesterol, or that uh, a protein needs to be derived uh, from uh, uh, non-nutrient-dense sources. So, this is where we should start. Uh, we've debunked uh, these assumptions. And in future videos, we're now going to be talking about actual, actual specific recommendations for diets that may uh, benefit people with particularly uh, uh, interesting conditions. Since we deal with fertility here, we're going to be talking about obese PCO, we're going to be talking about diabetic type PCO, we're going to be talking about athletic PCO in particular, and we're going to be talking about uh, male health in general as well. And we'll be talking about particular dietary recommendations that actually in fact do have some scientific uh, basis uh, to back them up. So, if your head is spinning from all this, uh, mine was too when I discovered these, uh, these uh, facts about nutrition. So, I hope this is helpful. This is Dr. Wilshire of Missouri Fertility in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, until next time. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Instagram.